This is the Tullo Kural Primary School Term 2 Mathematics Revision Set 2, Paper 1. Now, if you are my student and you are holding on to this set of work, I would have told you you got to finish your work first before you refer to this for the lesson and to do the corrections. If you are not my student, welcome. Uh, I will advise you to always pause the video at a question, try it on a piece of paper first, and after you solve it, then you press play. Let's start. Since it is paper 1, you are not allowed to use a calculator when you are solving these questions. So, just one more reminder, pupils who are doing this, and you're not my student, please press the pause button first. Express 7 whole and 1 8 as an improper fraction. So, 7 whole, 1 8. To turn this to improper, let's find out how many, let's do this. I'm sure you are familiar with this mechanical way of doing it. 7 times 8 is 56, plus 1 is 57. And this is the improper fraction. Alright, 57 divided by 8. And that will be answer 4. Next. Which shape has the smallest area? Now, this utilizes your uh, understanding of finding area of circle and area of uh, rectangular shapes or square shape. 3 units times 3 times 4 units. So here, I should see you're working. Alright, you have 12 square units. Here is a circle. But actually, okay, let's do another way, but without having to do the working. Huh? When the smallest area, this one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 square units. So here, this actually... If you look at this, it's actually 4 times 3, right? But this is a triangle, so it's half of it. So the area of this is actually 6. Now let's come to this. I already this part, if you have to draw this line in, I'm trying not to do any working for this, uh, because it's just a one mark question. I shouldn't need to do too many working for this. So far, I look at one 3 and 4, this is the smallest 6. So long as this is bigger than this, then 4 is the answer. Alright, let's see. Huh? So I already see 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, 4 square. Uh, this looks almost like a square. 5, almost, almost 6, almost 7, almost 8, almost 9. It's very big. So I think this is much bigger than 4. So, 4 is my answer. Next. Find the length of the stick. Now, this didn't start from 0. So, you've got to be careful not to write down 4 and a half. So, those who choose 4 and a half, you are making those primary 1 student mistakes huh? by not observing where this object is placed. It's placed here. Alright, and then... Next mistake is you think this is 1.3, 1.1, 1.2.3, but right? that's not true. If you look at this, it's 1 and this 2. Huh? So between these two, the value is 1 whole. But this 1 whole is divided by, is spread over how many um, gaps here? 1, 2, 3, 4. So in other words, every one part here is 1 quarter. If this is 1 whole, this is 1 whole and 1 quarter. This is one whole and a half. This is one whole and three quarter. And this, of course, two whole. Uh, okay. So this is actually at one whole three quarter. Then here is four whole, four whole one quarter, four whole two quarters. So what's the length? Four whole two quarter here. Minus away, one whole, three quarter. Three whole, this will convert into six divided by four. Now I have two whole, three, whole number minus whole number. Three minus one is two. Six minus three is three. So the answer is one. 
another way of doing this is this. I know this portion here is one hole, right? Two to three is one hole. This part is also one hole. So I know it's definitely two hole and something. Then I use this step here to find out this is actually one hole and this is, every part is one quarter. So if this part in the center here is two hole, this is one quarter, this is one quarter, another one quarter, and I also get two hole and three quarter. So this is another way you can get the answer. Remember these are one mark questions, you shouldn't need to do too much work to get it. Next one, question four. The table shows how Louise spent her money last month. She spent $7 on some magazine, $11 on a storybook, $4, wow, on erasers. It must be really expensive erasers, and $11 on a pencil case. So which of the following bar graphs best represents Louise's spending? Now, so here you notice there are two items with the same amount spent. Therefore, there must be two bar graphs that are of the same height. That's the first observation. Two bar graphs, same height. Second thing you need to observe is the two that are of the same height, which is at $11, must be higher than the other two. This is only $4. This is $7. So now I see this option definitely wrong because there's no bars of the same height. This would also be wrong. Yes, these two are the same height, but they are not the highest. Same problem with this, same height, but not the highest. Now I have the two of the same height. And the other two are shorter. This must, must be 7. And this must be 4. See, it's under 5, right? Must be 4. It's above 5, must be 7. 7 and 4. And these two are just above 10. So there must be 11. So 4 is the answer. Now, the figure shows some shaded squares. What is the minimum number of squares that need to be shaded? So that x, y is a line of symmetry. Now, usually, now for the purpose of this online lesson, I will do it this way. Now, line of symmetry means this line must cut both halves into identical shapes. It's like I have to fold this paper down this line. All right. Let me fold. I'm not very good at folding. Let me try. I fold it down this line. This is like a line of symmetry. Folding done, see? So that is the line of symmetry. So we look at it this way, and let's take a look at the squares. Huh? Which of the shaded squares are already split down the middle? So this first square, yes, is split into two triangles. Very good. I don't have to do anything on both sides. Next one, if there's a uh, square here, so there should be another square here. I need to shade one more. Go down. Okay, there's nothing here. There's a square on the right-hand side, so there should be another square on the left-hand side. So two already. Let's go down some more. Nothing here, nothing here. Let's go down. Nothing here. There's just a square on the left-hand side, so there should be another square shaded here on the right-hand side. Let's go down. Nothing same good one two three so three squares must be shaded for this x y line to become a line of symmetry do you have to shade this of course you do not i'm doing this for the purpose of showing you so three is the answer next the diagram shows some juice in a jar Wen Sing drank one quarter of the volume of juice how much juice was left in the jar now, of the volume, so it's one quarter is here, of is multiply, and the volume. So I need to find out what is the volume. I bring it closer for you to see. 
Now, so this kind of question is just like the previous one with the ruler. You need to know how big is the size of each gap. So here, let's start with the smallest number, 250. And let's check the number of gaps here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 gaps. So in other words, 5 units is 250. 1 unit or 1 gap will be 250 divided by 5, you will have 50. Let's double check. Huh? 50, 100. 150, 200. 250, A, correct, 300. 350, 400. 450, 500. So yes, we have established the size of every gap is 50 milliliters. So if this is 750, then this must be 750 plus 50, which will be 800. So far okay. Now one quarter of the juice was drank by uh, Wen Xing. So how much juice was left? Simple, right? If 4, now you have 800 uh, you, um, 800 milliliters of juice inside. If you drink one quarter, left three quarter. Just do this. And divided by four is one, divided by four is two. 200 times three, two times three is six. I add the zero in, and this is my answer. Mr. Lee took two whole and two fifth hours to drive from town R to town W at a uniform speed of 70 km per hour. How far is town W from town R? Now, you can do this by your unitary method. Okay, let's draw a simple uh, model. Town R to town W. Okay, now he took this amount of time. Now, in case you have not learned speed, uh, speed, the unit of speed is distance over time. Alright, so distance divided by time, this will be your formula for speed. So we're given a time here, 2 hours, 2 and 2 fifth hours of the time this person, Mr. Lee, took to travel this whole distance. And you know he traveled at this speed. So how far is town W from this? So in other words, let's rewrite this formula. I'm supposed to find distance, right? How far? So distance will be equals to speed times time. And speed is 70 kilometers per hour. Time is 2 whole and 2 fifth. Now usually, I will advise my students to change this mixed number into an improper fraction. So 2 times 5 is 10, 10 plus 2 is 12, 70 divided by 5, I will have 14, 14 times 12, let's do this, 14 times 2, 28, 14 times 1, 14, then I would have 168 as my distance. Okay, answer is number 2. Next one, question 8. Mandy had $1,800 left after spending 70% of, of her savings on a laptop. So, this is left. This is spent. In other words, she spent 30%. Sorry, she spent 70%. Spend, huh? So, this 30% is what was left. And we know what was left was $1,800. She spent 70%, left 30%, and 30% is this, $1,800 left. So how much at first? So I must find 100%, right? So I should have my 30 divided by 3, I have 10%. Here I divide by 3, I'll have 600 here to get the 100, I times 10, times 10, I have 6,000. This Mandy is a rich girl. Huh? She has $6,000 at first. 
Now, just a reminder to my students, I would like to see your working in the work that you hand in to me. So if you do not have your working, regardless of whether your answer is correct, please make sure you do them. Question 10. Arrange these masses from the lightest to the heaviest. Now, they are all at 3 kilograms. 3.0 means 3 kilograms. 3 kilograms. So all same, uh, whole number. Next, hard to compare. So I need to change this half kg. Now, I know 1 kg is equal to 1,000 gram. So this is 1 quarter, sorry, it's 1 quarter kg, right? 1 kg is 1,000 gram. So 1 quarter kg with 1 quarter times 1,000 will be 250 grams. So this is actually, if I rewrite in the decimal, it's 3.250 kg. This is 3.205 kg. Okay, let's take them up. Huh? The first one is 3.250 the second one is 3.025. The third one is 3.205. Which one is the lightest? Same here. Ah, this is the smallest number, 0. This must be the lightest. Next one, let's check. 5 is bigger than 2, bigger than 0. So this must be the heaviest. Okay, and since it's zero here, this must be the sorry, this, this is a lightest ready. Yeah, this is the heaviest, this is the middle. Uh. So I must start off with 3.025 from lightest. 3.025 is this two. Then I go on to heaviest is 3.25. 3.25 is actually three and one quarter. Three and one quarter is here. So answer is one for question 10. Question 11. Now, question 11 onwards are two marks question. If there are two marks question, it means that a little bit more working, a little bit more thinking will be required. That is to be understood. Kersing had the following number of coins in her pocket. Two 10 cent coin, two 20 cent coin, one 50 cent coin, and one one dollar coin. She gave four coins to her brother. Which of the following could not be the amount of money given to her brother. Okay, four coins. Huh? So let's try. Now, the good thing is I give you all these numbers already. Okay, let's make things easier. So let's find out the different types of coins that can be given. Huh? So she has two 10 cents, right? So let's very simply just put it in. 10 cents, 10 cents. 20 cents, there are two 20 cents. 20 cents, 20 cents. Then one fifty cent and one one dollar. One dollar is one hundred cents. Let's check four coins. Can I put four ticks to get to sixty cents or not? Hmm. Let's see. Ah, uh. sixty can be twenty, twenty, ten, ten. All right, it's possible. But we want not be the amount. So answer cannot be one. Huh? Next one eighty. 80 can be 20, 50, 20, 10 is 80, uh, but 4 coins, this is 3 coins only. Any other possible ways? I can't see any other possible ways. I can see 50, 20, 10 to get to 80. Next one, nine, so this one could be the answer. 90 cent, I can get it by 50, 20, 10, and 10, right? 10 plus 10 plus 20 is 40. 40 plus 50 is 90. And that makes 90 cents. And it's 4 coins. And that could not be the amount. So not this. Last one. $1 here. 40 cents. $1, 20, 30, 40. So not this. So answer is number 2. A piece of paper in the shape of a trapezium is folded as shown below. Trapezium means that there are a pair of parallel lines. So this is parallel to this. This was folded down. Huh? It's like this. Huh? Folded. Okay, folded. So this was folded down. 
this tells you angle Y here is the same as this angle. Now, find angle Y. We are given some information. This is 48 degrees. This is 98 degrees. So those in my class will know I talk about this thing called a C shape. I'm going to redraw this thing out. This top part only. Yeah. This part is 98 degrees. Right, this part. Same thing. What about this entire angle here? These are a pair of parallel lines. To get this, very simple, 180 minus 98. And we will have 82. So this is 82 degrees. Why do I know 82 degrees? Means this whole thing is 82 degrees. If this is 48, then I can find out what are these two angles. So second step, 82 minus 48. I'll have 34 degrees. So these two are 34 degrees. Next, since this is folded, it means that this angle is the same as this angle. It also means this angle here on top is the same as this angle here below. Alright, these two are the same. So if this angle here is 34, one of them must be 34 divided by 2. I have 17. Why do I want to find that? Well, if I know this angle is 17 and this is a triangle, I can find out what is this angle, which is the same as angle Y. Right? So this will be 180 minus 98 minus 17. 180 minus 98, I get 82 minus 17. 82 minus 17. I had 65. So answer is 65. Charlene had some blue and red beads. She gave one quarter of the blue beads and five seven of the red beads to her brother. The number of blue beads left was one six of the total number of beads she had at first. So what's the total number of beads she had at first? Okay, now this one could be challenging for some of you. So let's draw the model out. Now Charlene had some blue and red beads. Huh? She gave one quarter of the blue beads and five seven of the red beads to her brother. And the main clue is this part. The number of blue beads left was one six of the total number of beads she had left at first. Let's start with the blue beads. So for those of you who are in my class, uh, please make sure you draw the model out. So this one quarter was the one given to the brother. And this part is what she, Charlene, has left. And they say the number of blue beads left, which is these three parts, is actually one-sixth of the total number of beads she had at first. One-sixth. In other words, if one-sixth stands for three units, then one whole stands for 18 units. Now, 5 7 of the beads were given to her brother. 5 7 of the red beads. If total number of beads were 18, and there were 4 blue beads, so there must be 14 red beads. 5 7 of the red beads, 5 7 of, of his times, right? Red beads. And then simplify this. So 10 red beads was given to brother. We're supposed to find the fraction of the total number of beads Charlene gave away. So it must be the giveaway 
divided by the total. You know, total is 18. Give away one blue, one unit of blue bits and 10 units of red bits. So 1 plus 10 is 11. And the answer is number 1. Next, question 14. The figure below shows the length and breadth of a rectangle. So length, breadth. What percent increase in area when both length and breadth increase by 50%? So 50% times 4 all right, would be half. 50% is actually half as a fraction, right? Half times 4, which is 2 cm. They're saying, oh, if the, now this one becomes 6 cm instead. 4 plus 2 is 6. And this one, half of 50% times 6 would be 3 cm. In other words, if they have to increase this, um, how do I increase this? Like this, okay. Uh, I'll just redraw it here. Instead of six, it now become a plus three more. Like this. Instead of four, now increase by two more. So this is the original. This is the increased area. So now the new area here. This will be nine cm. Six plus three is nine. This part here is 6 cm. 4 plus 2 is 6. This new big area here is 6 times 9, 54. This previous area is 4 times 6 equals 24. What's the percentage increase? Increase with 54 minus 24. 54 minus 24 is 30. So increase is 30. Percentage increase must divide by the original. And the original is the first one before the increase, and the area is 24. So when divided by this, right, and multiply by 100, you will get your answer. Let's simplify. I can divide by 6, I will have 4, I will have 5. 4, divide by 4, divide by 4, I get 25. 25 times 5 is 125 percent and that's the answer number four now you have been working through with me now um i think you deserve a break right we have been sitting here with me for about half an hour then come back and finish the remaining parts